<clears throat> at Refugio. I was the uh, GIS coordinator there, and I was coordinating between the Osprey GIS team. Uh, NOAA had a bunch of GIS people there, and NOAA's contractor, RPI. So we had a lot of GIS people, and we were all working towards the same goal of managing the influx of data that was coming in. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, so let me first ask you, how many of you know what a common operational picture is or have heard the term or have a clear understanding of it? <laughs> okay, so this is <clears throat> actually Osper's view of what a common operational uh, picture is. It's basically a spatial data viewer. Um, um, so it's a data viewer, which means you need GIS software in the background to create the data that goes into the viewer. Um, the common operational picture will, uh, will, will integrate all of the convergent data that comes in, um, and there should be no proprietary software required to operate your or to use your uh, COP. Um, COP provides situational awareness to all those that are involved in the response um, across the entire, uh, um, the broad uh, response community. That's in the command post, and that could be back in your office in Houston, okay? Um, there are a lot of common operational pictures out there. There's uh, plenty of vendors uh, that are selling uh, their product. Every major shipping company and oil company has contractors that provide them with a common operational picture. Um, they all have different focuses. Um, you know, some are very complex dashboard type things. We have multiple windows. Some are very simple. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really here to say which one is better. Uh, they're all, they're all excellent, okay? Uh, a lot of work went into designing all of them and they're all very good products. But I am here to say that at Osper, we use uh, Noah's, uh, the pointer. Noah's Irma. Uh, there. Okay, so we use Irma as a cop, but we also use it as a pre-spill planning tool. Okay, and I'll go ahead and uh, talk about that. So this is, uh, <clears throat> you all know that the Coast Guard has, uh, each sector has their own area contingency plan. What we've done at Osper <clears throat> is we've taken all the data, the pertinent response data from these plans and put it into Irma as, um, uh, as the planning tool. So here's an example from Refugio. These are what we call our operational divisions, Osper's field uh, team, um, and we have a lot of people in the field have um, partitioned the state, the entire coastline into operational divisions. Um, they've taken it one step further and created uh, SCAT segments. Everybody knows what SCAT is, the shoreline cleanup assessment technique. So each one of these segments uh, is approximately uh, a, a, a linear, uh, uh, it's an area where a SCAT team can go within several hours and then get back to the command post. Um, they're in Refugio, um, these are not, well, they are kind of set in stone, but we have the ability to add uh, sub-segments, which we did at Refugio, this is where the response, that's where the initial release was, and we went ahead and sub -segment. And in our IRMA, we have all the uh, sensitive sites from the uh, ACP document. Now, when you click um, this particular, I'm simulating using IRMA here, okay? Because it's, I've learned a long time ago, you don't do live demonstrations, okay? They just they never work. So what I just did is I took my mouse and I clicked on that little sensitive site there, and up comes the attribute table, right? So this is Refugio Creek happens to be right next to where the, uh, where the spill occurred. And we have a few hot links here. So if you click on that link, oh, wrong way. Yeah, you get an air photo of the site, right? This is for people that are coming, you know, during an oil spill, uh, you have responders that are not necessarily local, okay? They come from all over. But this is just an aid. Um, if you click on this other hot link here, you actually get the page 
out of the uh, ACP document. And you know, this is like uh, one of four. So I'm, again, I'm simulating, but theoretically you can scroll down and find out everything you need to know um, about that uh, sensitive site. Okay. Now this is uh, this is a data set from Refugio, and you see I have not logged in here. So this is this is what was available to the public, and really all it was was our fishery closure area, you know, the the, the, well, the latest the, the third command post, um, the uh, the spill point, and the, uh, the SCAT segments and operational divisions. Now if I were to log in, which I did, all of a sudden the table of contents goes down, uh, you get a lot more features. So what we, we have the ability to control um, what you see based on your login credentials. So if you're a member of the public, all you see is what I showed. If you're a responder, you see all of this. If you're part of NRDA, you might not see all of this, but you'll see stuff that a responder won't see. So we can control who sees what. This is, uh, well, so we have the ability to, since it's a data viewer, we can integrate all this GIS data from other sources. Uh, this is NOAA's uh, uh, trajectory analysis for uh, May 24th. Here's the spill site, that's the pipeline, and you see they predicted heavy oil right near the site, and that was, that was not, a very, not a very far stretch. Here's the SCAT data from that day, and uh, if you look at the legend, the red is heavy oiling, and yes, it's right here, right here where the, uh, the break point was. This is the total extent of shoreline oiling and all the SCAT surveys. So we use IRMA as our environmental data management tool, okay? It's very good at organizing. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're, we're using GIS software, um, it, it's a little more complicated. You have uh, data in folders, and you know, but this this just makes it handy for just about anybody to pull up the data they need to make the decisions they need to make. And here is the infrastructure that was uh, well affected. Uh, uh, there's a well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven platforms that are currently shut in because they can't send their oil uh, because this line is not operating right now. And there's an Exxon facility. So th this still had uh, not only environmental impact, but it had a big uh, uh, commercial impact. Okay, so this is, uh, this is kind of a schematic of how it all comes together um, in the command post during a spill response. So the shaded area, this is all data coming in from the field. All right, so it's either going to planning or operations, and from there it's either going directly to GIS or directly to the situation unit. Now in the, uh, in the uh, ICS org chart, it doesn't quite look like this. GIS is uh, you know, under planning, under situation, uh, kind of way down in there. <coughs> but uh, in reality, GIS, well, it, it should be a unit by itself because uh, we support so much of the response. We're really not just uh, uh, helping the situation unit leader. So the way we had it at Refugio was there was an assistance situation unit leader and that, that was my role. And I just kind of coordinated between situation, uh, what their needs were for their situation wall, and, uh, and, uh, and the other GIS contractors. So in the GIS unit, that's where the management takes place. That's where all the QA, QC of the data that's coming in from the field happens. Uh, we have a, a little small server we bring with us, and we store all the response data in the command post. Uh, it's backed up to the cloud, but we want to have it right there, just in case uh, there's no internet. Right? Things happen, right? When, when, when you need a good internet connection, that's just when you're not going to get it. Okay, so after, you know, after the data is processed, then it goes out to either the situation board in, in paper map form or into the common operational picture. And from there, it can be distributed out to uh, other COPs because it's a, a, a GIS uh, data viewer. Um, we can electronically transport files back and forth. We're doing that now with uh, the major uh, contractor for all the major shipping and oil uh, companies in California. Uh, we worked that out, we'll be doing that uh, tomorrow at uh, BP Shipping Drill. And we've done it in the past at others. Um, and yeah, so it goes out to the, to the JIC and out to social media, all that through the COP and from the GIS unit. 
Yeah, well, this is my last slide, actually. <laughs> so how do we pull all this off, okay? This is the basic document that allows us to share data, right? It's our, um, yeah, it's our information management and data sharing plan. Um, this has to be signed by everyone, all the, all the incident commanders, however many there are, there's three or four or five these days, they all have to sign off on it. We want, to, we want this to happen right up front at the beginning of the incident, okay? So everyone understands that we are all entitled to all the data that is uh, collected for the emergency response. And it, this helps everybody out in the long run because in the past, well, nobody, everybody didn't have all the data. And to get data after the fact out of uh, other entities, it's kind of like pulling teeth. It's like, well, no, we don't want to give it to you, you know? And I don't want to hear that. Tom doesn't want to hear that. So we do this right up front and then it's very clear that we are entitled to everything and you as the RP are entitled to everything and we're gonna share it, we're all gonna get along and, uh, and nip this in the bud right up. <laughs> That's a getting along part. Yes. <laughs> Why can't we all get along? And we do now, sort of. <laughs> and uh, that's really all I had planned to talk about. Uh, you know, oil on, uh, an oil film on the ocean surface is, is horrible for the environment, but it actually can be real pretty. Get up close and look at it. Okay, so let's, don't walk away. Oh. Did you have the...